one of the very popular reputed spiritual guru of India was operated a couple of days ago for a brain problem. And this news is going viral. And the problem for which he was operated was chronic subdural hematoma. Now, I am going to discuss today something more in details about this problem. Chronic subdural hematoma is a very, very common problem in the neurosurgery etna. Chronic subdural hematoma incidence is growing up every day. Generally, the range, incidence range varies from some figures say from 5% to some figures say 20%. You can ask me why. The reason is, as more and more patients are subjected for investigative facility like CT scan and MRI, more and more are things are picked up. Gone are the days when patients who are getting confused, falling repeatedly, particularly anybody beyond 60 years, were not subjected for investigations. They were thinking some dementia, some other problems, some weakness, these sort of general terms. But in fact, there is a lurking problem in the brain called subdural hematoma. So the incidence now is going up. This problem is mostly seen in the age beyond 60, 65. Now for India, this problem is going to be more so. As of now, the life expectancy of the average Indian in 2024 is 70.62 years. Now imagine what it was in the year 1947 when we got independence. That was abysmal 35 years. That means there is a 100% jump of people living longer and healthier. And that is an indication of, people may say that the health facilities of India are not very good. That's not very appropriate because unless the health facilities have improved significantly, nothing is 100% possible. This improvement in the expectancy, life expectancy, be it the vaccination, be it the water, be it the health facilities, whatever, the definitely Indians are living longer. Now, if you ask me what are the percentage of people living beyond 60 years in India today? Now, today there is about 14.9 crores, you can say 15 crores of the 139 crores Indians beyond 60 years. And this percentage is going to go up. The expectation is by 2036, it's going to increase 15 percent further and by 2050, it's going to be 25% more. So that means people living beyond 70, we are going to say very many in the years to come. And this problem, chronic subdural hematoma, is a manifestation to that age group. I'm talking about chronic subdural hematoma. Acute subdural hematoma is a little different. That is because of accident, immediately there is a clot, patient is unconscious, patient was brought to the hospital, emergency surgery requirement. That's a totally different cup of tea. I will concentrate more on the chronic subdural hematoma. The chronic subdural hematoma, the reasons other than the age and of course the problems what I mentioned earlier is now the usage of antiplatelets agents, anticoagulants. As the population age is increasing, the usage of medication like the cosprin that has become a household name and clopidogrel. I understand that the antiplatelets, antiplatelet usage in globally has touched the something like 30.6 billion US dollars in 2023. I tried my best to get the Indian figures. I'm not able to get the Indian figures. How much is the usage of the antiplatelets and the anticoagulants in India? So those are antiplatelets and anticoagulants. The blood gets thinner. These antiplatelet drugs are otherwise known as blood thinners, as you know. So in this, what happens, there is a small injury to the head. Actually, chronic septuroloma, some major accident doesn't need to take place. Some hit against the table or the chair. Many a time, the individual doesn't remember also that there was an injury. The same happened to the guru also, I was told. And over the period of time, the individual doesn't bother about the injury. Slowly, some headache vomitings, some confusion, and any visual problem, weakness of one side of the limbs, speech problem, these sort of things develop. There are many occasions, particularly in the 65 and all, people get confused, I'm talking about the relatives, thinking a stroke or 
because of the old age problem, dementia or a brain tumor. So my contention will be chronic subdural hematoma is going to be much more common than it was, it is, it was and now more and more investigative things are required. So confusion between stroke, brain tumor and chronic subdural hematoma should be avoided at any cost because the treatment of chronic subdural hematoma as I'm going to tell in the next few minutes is very, very simple unlike a stroke treatment or a brain tumor treatment. The investigative facilities are very simple, either a CT scan brain or MRI of the brain. And when the treatment comes, the treatment is mostly these hematomas need to be operated. There are thin subdural hematomas, patient is reasonably conscious. Under the supervision of the doctor, patient can be treated what is conservatively. But that is only observation continuously, that's what is important. Patient going home and developing a problem in the middle of the night coming as an emergency is not advisable. So patients, once the headache and the problems what I mentioned are there, the investigation shows that there is a subdural hematoma. Now you can ask me, what is this subdural hematoma? The creator, the almighty, has created brain in a very specific way. There is a skull bone and below that there are three layers of membranes and below that is brain, the most important organ in the body. And the layers of the, over the protective layers over the brain, the outermost towards the skull bone is called the jura mater. And the innermost layer nearer to the brain is called pia mater. Now the subdural hematoma, subdural, below the jura, between the outer layer and the middle layer. I think you understood the issue. So sometimes even middle layer may not be seen. It's a very thin membrane between the pia mater. So between the jura and brain in a logistical way. And this hematoma is over the surface of the brain. It doesn't stay under one part of the brain. That's called the hemispherical hole of the surface of the brain. The technically surgery is very simple. Mostly we make two holes on the side in one hole in the uh, frontal area and this is in the parietal area. And we give a lavage. There are small blood clots which are accumulated and they should be washed out completely. The dictum in surgery is the washings, what we are giving, putting saline from the above bar hole to the lower bar hole should be clear. Till such time, the washings should be cleared with saline. And the, I generally do and most of the people leave a drain because there is a dead space. The reason is, there is the methodology, why the subdural hematoma, the logic or etiology is, there are some thin beams going from the brain surface to the skull surface. Now over the period of time when the aging process sets in and goes on, the brain size shrinks. And the beans which are otherwise supported by the brain are hanging free. I think you understood it. So any small injury, the bean, one of the beans can rupture. And over the course of time, the subdural hematoma. Few people ask me questions, the difference between hemorrhage and hemor hematoma. Hemorrhage is an active bleeding. Please understand. Hematoma is an organized clot. So we are talking about the organized clot because we don't see over the period of time for weeks together, as I said, in a chronic subdural hematoma. And the CT scan and MRI, sometimes we need to look in whether there is any membrane layering. Rarely, there are some occasions, about 10%, 15%, there are layers. These are the situations where two holes may not be adequate. We may need to do what's called craniotomy, a little larger procedure and duration is also longer. Otherwise, making two bar holes, it takes about maximum 45 minutes to one hour. And craniotomy takes longer duration. So, surgery of the subdural hematoma results, if you ask me, are excellent in one word. The only thing, it depends upon when the patient was operated, what was the condition of the patient? Was he talking? Was came walking to the hospital? Suppose the patient is unconscious and the patient is on antiplatelet drugs, as I mentioned. Then the results will not be very good. Now, the dilemma in front of the doctor and the attendancy are whether to operate with a patient who is on antiplatelet drugs or not. Patient has to be operated. There is no other way. But the patient is on already those so, so, blood thinners. 
then we have to give the chance, talk to the family, give plated concentrates, and then we have to operate. These sort of situations where, or there is a membrane, as I told you, that is the situation where the recurrence of the hematoma is a little longer. Recurrence means reformation. Nobody likes it, but there is a chance. And mind you, the recurrence all over the medical uh, terminology, medical uh, formula is anything around 30%, 10 to 30%. It depends upon the complications what I mentioned. Though I said that surgery is very simple technically, results are excellent, there are certain possible complications like epilepsy, as I said, reaccumulation of the hematoma, or there is a still a bleeding inside the brain or infection because most of the people are diabetics, hypertensive in the age group. So these are the complications we have to take worth taking. Otherwise, patients who is talking, patient came walking, and there are many occasions where the patient is cooperative. We can do under even local anesthesia. Even when the patient otherwise has some cardiac problem severe and the anesthesia itself is dangerous, we can take a chance and do under bar holes. Making two holes, and today we have the electric drills. So it takes very short time, but the results are excellent. So chronic subgeral hematoma is a reasonably common problem. Happens in the age group beyond 60. Mostly in men, the reasons I don't know. Those are on antiplatelet, anticoagulants, the chances are much more. And those who have been on the alcohol because of the chronic liver disease, the uh, proteins, uh, production from the liver reduces. So the blood clotting mechanism is at a low end. So those who have been alcoholic also, they have a cha chance. People who have blood diseases, they are born with a disease, like hemophilia, we can't help. They are again prone for uh, more problems. But we have to take all the chances, taking a good history, and accordingly take the, all the precautions before surgery, and hope for the best. Thank you.